little hush. Welcome back to the channel. So you're here because you want to learn how to avoid getting any unwanted attention when you're out while camping or solo camping. And let's be honest, people are the biggest cause of problems when we're out and about. So if we can avoid them altogether, or alternatively, if we can't avoid them, have them walk past without them even knowing that we're here, it's gonna be all the better for us. The two biggest risk factors in getting unwanted attention are the number of people in a location multiplied by the length of time that we're there for. We can limit the number of people we come into contact by choosing a location wisely. And I've got a whole video on that, so rather than repeat myself here, I'll just leave a link in the description. But in terms of limiting our exposure to the people that are there, the best advice I can give you is to arrive late and set up after most people have gone home for the day, and then make sure you're packed up nice and early before most people return. And if you do those two things, I think you'll find that that will solve most of the problems of getting unwanted attention, and the rest is just icing on the cake. But if you like cake, and you can probably tell I do, then you shouldn't ignore the icing. Therefore, you should also try to avoid being heard, being seen, or being smelt. Sound travels a long way, particularly at night. And that's because the air still are, and there's less background noise to distract people. So any unnatural sounds tend to get picked up a lot more easily and can definitely give away your position. So if you're talking on your phone really loudly or making a YouTube video, and you know who you are, then you're definitely broadcasting your position and you're much more likely to attract unwanted attention. Yeah, I really don't understand why... Excuse me. Hello? Yeah, I'm making a YouTube video. The other thing we can do is to avoid being seen, or at least being seen in a way that invites unwanted attention. And that's really about being discreet. So if you are camping and you have your rucksack, make sure that all of your kit is not strapped to the outside of your bag, but neatly squared away inside Pack light, you know, if you need to, to allow that to happen. And then if people don't know you're camping, they're much less likely to give you any bother and they'll leave you alone. While a camouflage hat and jacket can definitely help you blend into the natural environment, it tends to make you stand out to other people because it's just not what other people are wearing in the area. So think about trying to blend in with the other people who are using the area as well as the natural environment. And people are much more likely to leave you alone because you just don't stand out so much. One reason people get seen and they get unwanted attention is because their shelter is recognised. And it's really easy to see a shelter because our eyes are incredibly good at picking out unnatural things, such as this straight line. So it's really important that we try and disguise those. Now, what I would recommend is if you can't set up in dead ground or we screen by vegetation, then you try and break up the outline as best as possible. Now you can do this by adding vegetation, but you can also go further and add a camouflage net. And this works really well, like this. The trick to using a camouflage net is you can't just drape it over the shelter because that doesn't actually break up its outline. You need to use sticks and ties in order to create a new irregular shape that fills the human eye into thinking it's a different thing altogether. So that's the stick it with the camera is attached to. And from here it's one, two, three, four paces. So uh, very close indeed. Okay, so this is the shelter at 10 paces away. And as you can see, I think this is already starting to blend in a lot more effectively. Let's go back another 10 paces and see what it's like from there. I couldn't actually get 20 paces away because I got to 18 and ran out of room. But as you can see, even from 18 paces, the shelter is now a lot more camouflaged and it's definitely starting to blend in quite a lot more with the background. But what we'll do, we'll walk towards it. I'll count the paces in my head and then we'll see how many paces we are away from it when it starts to get more visible. So I'm 18 now, let's start moving forwards. 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Now I haven't camouflaged the sides and as you can see the sides are a lot more visible than the front is and that's the beauty of a camouflage net it does a really good job breaking up that shape really well. The other reason things are seen is because of their surface and that's made up of a number of different things and one of them is colour. So you want to choose a background that matches the colour of your equipment uh, and clothing and make sure that that clothing and equipment is a natural colour such as kind of coaty brown or a khaki, something that's sort of nice and natural so you can make it match the background. The other component of surface we've got to be aware of is shine. Now if you look at the basher behind me which is a genuine military shoe one you'll see that it shines a lot more than its environment does that will definitely give you away. 
So make sure that your you know, equipment, if you can, if it's a matte finish, that is definitely a better thing. And if you can't um, make it matte, then try and put it in the shade, uh, you know, or, or put something like a camouflage net over the top so it is not shiny. That will definitely help you. The other component of uh, surface you've got to be aware of is the texture. Now, again, if you look at the bash behind me, you know, that is very smooth and the environment is not. So that sort of stands out like the, the bollocks on, on, on a bulldog. So it's definitely one to be aware of. Well, if you look at this camouflage net, you know, it's kind of got this sort of rough texture to it. And that definitely makes it blend in a lot better. And that's why it's so effective because it not only deals with the shape, it also deals with the texture and deals with shine as well. So a camouflage net is a really great tool. Another consideration to think about is shadow because you're much more likely to be spotted if you're in full sun than you are in the shade. Now look at my position here. I'm not, you know, I'm not kind of trying to hide or anything, but right now I'm in shadow. Now let's compare that to what I'm like when I'm in the sun. So I'm now in the full sun. Do I stand out anymore? I suspect I probably do. So if you can, always try and go in the shade, but just bear in mind the shade does move with the sun. And generally when we're camping, you know, we're thinking about we want to be in the shade for sunset and hopefully by sunrise when the sun does come out we'll be long gone another reason people get seen is because they get silhouetted or the shelter gets silhouetted against the sky now right now you can see me against the forest floor and you know from a distance i'll be reasonably camouflaged from here i'd kind of blend in quite well but if i change the camera angle so i'm against the sky you'll see just how much easier my outline is to see See, I stand out like anything from this direction. So that's a silhouette. So just make sure that you're not silhouetted, either you or your shelter, against the skyline. And the final thing to avoid is to avoid being smelt. And that particularly is around lighting a fire and also cooking as well. Now, if you're cooking things like steaks and burgers and chickens, as I see a lot of people do in the woods, then obviously you know, that can be smelt for quite a long way, particularly to dogs uh, because dogs have a really really good sense of smell and even if the humans themselves can't smell it although quite often they will because it's an unnatural smell in the woodlands uh, the dogs can give um, your position away because they'll run over to investigate they could start barking and that will alert their owners so definitely you know if you're going to cook you know the best thing to do is those kind of foil pouch meals that you get from the kind of camping shop uh, and that's what the army use as well and they're really good because not only are they very convenient and they're very tasty but they also keep smells down to a minimum because when you're cooking all of that smell is contained within the bag itself then you just eat it uh, and, and then a little bit of smell comes out but much much better than cooking a steak on a fire now on fire that is another really important point because a fire can be smelt for miles away and even if you're just using a little twig stove for cooking that can still be smelt now the problem with fire is People don't know what sort of fire it is. They don't know it's a twig stove. And if people smell the fire, they may assume it's just kids lighting fires again, uh, and they may call the fire brigade or the police, and that's gonna bring people onto your position very quickly. So the best thing to do is not have a fire at all, and just use a gas stove or an alcohol stove. Hope that was useful. Until next time.